Hey, thanks so much for clicking on another video of mine, unless it's your first time here, in which case I invite you to subscribe because you're going to see lots of really cool content coming up. Now, over the last several months, particularly the bulk of this year, but for years now, you've seen me take family heirlooms and different knives owned by people all over the world from Australia to the United Kingdom to all across the US and Canada, all over the world, you've seen me take these pieces, like I said, family heirlooms, uh, old kitchen knives that belong to grandmothers that have passed away, all kinds of stuff like that, bring it back to excellent condition, perfect performing condition, in some cases flawless aesthetic condition for their owners. What we're doing today and what we're starting on to focus on right now is a little different and that is making dreams come true from scratch. And I have spent most of this morning drawing up templates, different orders from clients that want something totally unique, something very special, and that's what we're gonna be uh, working on. And boy, we have some really sweet knife builds coming up. Walked into my office this morning and saw this sitting on my office chair. I'm sure you guys can read that. It's not too often lately, usually at least once a day. My, uh, my oldest girl leaves one of these on my chair. Cole's grandfather has been passed away for several years now. Cole's grandfather had a beautiful hunting knife that he passed down to Cole's dad, and I, I, I'm thinking Cole will inherit it, but it's, it's a beautiful piece, and while they love the knife, they don't want to keep using it. It's a good hunting knife, but they don't want to keep using it and wearing it away and, and risk losing it or damaging it because it's such a, a heirloom piece. It's really sent a lot of sentimental value, of course. So what they want from me is to build something very similar, a close replica of that knife, so they can carry in commemoration of the grandfather while keeping the grandfather's knife safely tucked away. So it's a, kind of like a, an homage to grandpa's knife. So that's what we're going to build today. And I have a rough design drawn up here. As you can see, we've matched the uh, the blade shape almost perfectly. You kind of got to have a bit of imagination or know what's going on inside the handle because it's a leather stack, of course, and we're not going to do all those slips of brass. That would take a lot of time and increase the price. So the, the client didn't want to do that, but we're going to do lovely leather stack. I'm also going to try a design back here on the end of the tang that I haven't done before, but it's how the knife was originally assembled. I've already cut out that rough billet. This is 01 tool steel. This is what I love to work with. So we're going to take this to the grinder now, start shaping this in. Get everything, get that tang nice and parallel. You can see it's wonky there now. The blade shape dialed in. We can grind our bevels and everything. This is going to be a fun one. right here is exactly the reason I got this meal or the the primary reason and I've used it for everything but knife work so far but the making of guards this would have been pretty complex before we have to do an 8 inch wide groove cut through here that a tang can slip through and before that would have been a bunch of eighth inch holes and of course your bit tries to draw into the next one so you can only get them so close together and getting them in a perfect line and not wavering which gets you outside your eighth it's very difficult so you end up taking a lot of time of course once you punch those holes then you have to file through to the next one with a little small file you guys have seen me do that many times on this channel now we can do it in one operation and you'll see just just how beautiful this is. Now, this is a mill vise. It's a calibrated vise, so the jaws come uh, fit perfectly together, very precise. It has these long form jaws on tracks, so they don't really skew much like a drill press vise or something, where those skew up and down. Right here, we have what are called parallels, and this is a perfectly calibrated set of exact dimension 
pieces of steel. So I can set a piece like this and we're still perfectly level in plane with the vise, which should be in plane with the table, which should be in plane with your machine, etc. It just it allows you to be precise across multiple different components. So we'll lock that down now. This is very secure. Let's chuck up our cutter. Now today, for the first time, we're going to use one of these gorgeous little carbide 1 8 cutters which I bought specifically for my knife making and I've only played with one at this point because I just haven't had a guard to make since I've got them but now they're going to come into use. Now the way a mill holds on to your cutters and there are different types but this is an R8 cullet. You can see it's threaded here as a keyway so the keyway lines up with this right here and ensures it goes in the right place in in the bore here in the machine. We're threaded in here and there is a draw bore, a rod, that runs down through the machine and when that threads in here it draws this up into the machine. You can see we have slots here so as it's being drawn up, notice this cone shape, it draws this in tight on the machine and tight on a cutter like this. And this is just a beautiful system and what amounts to an extremely rigid system. Far more so than you can get with just like a, a, a drill chuck. They have a forward and reverse gears which is just beautiful. Let's go high speed. We have high and low gear. This is a small little cutter so we'll run at a little higher speed. We're in soft material so... Go, plunge, cut. But it will side cut beautifully. And look at that, perfect 1 8 inch channel. Now we have a square tang here, so we have to square everything up and prepare, or round everything off, sorry, just fit up this block. And then we'll grind the block to shape after. We don't worry about that now, but you see, it'll drop down over right to there, I roughed out the tang. But now we have to square up the shoulders, got a bunch of file work to do here. I'll just file down until my file starts skating because it will skate on that annealed or on that uh, hardened tool steel guide. And now we're beginning one of the more intricate parts of this build, and that is the pummel, or the rear of the handle. We're going to do that in a very interesting way. You notice I've cut the tang down to a 1 8 inch round protrusion, and I'm tapping that right now. I'm cutting threads into that little tang protrusion, as you can see right here. Now I'm using some quarter inch brass to drill an 8 inch hole a little bit different than an eighth inch hole, but that's what we're going to use to tap to those threads. I'm doing this work before I cut out the piece from the brass so that I can clamp it cleanly and firmly, the entire piece of bar stock as you see here, in my vise. It's just a better order of operations. And now after those threads have been cut, the holes drilled, now I'll go ahead and cut out that little circle and just wait and see what we're about to do here.
I found a little bolt to screw into the threads on the piece of brass. Now that piece of brass is faceted. We want it nice and round. So I also took a piece of scrap tool steel, ground a chisel edge on it, and clamped it in my vise as you can see here. Now I can chuck the piece of brass in and I can use my vertical mill like a lathe. Look at that. I've used this operation a couple different times now and it just works really well. That hardened tool steel on things like brass and aluminum just works beautifully. You don't dull it up at all. And like I said, you can use your vertical mill like a lathe and it is just very nice. You get accurate results. You get beautiful results. And how much fun is that just to watch? Now that brass nut we just created will be used to hold on an aluminum pummel and that's what was used on the original knife that we have the pictures of. So I'm just cutting a half inch diameter hole with a flat bottom here now. We'll take the eighth inch center out of that as well so it can sit over the threaded tang that, we've, that we have on the knife. also cut a shallow eighth inch slot here that can sit over the shoulders of our tang so the pummel doesn't rotate on its axis. And now I'm sure you can see it all coming together. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you come back for the next part when we complete this knife. Really appreciate you being here. Hit that like button, subscribe, leave a comment down below. And if you could share, that's the greatest way you can help promote this video. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you in the next one.